I usually almost never cover gaming news. It's not really what I center my content around, and to be honest, I don't follow much of it, and gaming's been pretty slow lately. But I found this news very interesting to say the least. To bring everyone up to speed, back in January of this year, Microsoft announced that they were acquiring Activision Blizzard and all of its owned IPs for a massive $69 billion. That meant Microsoft would then own games like Crash Bandicoot, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush, Starcraft, and Call of Duty. I mean, getting all those massive IPs under your belt for an insane amount of money like 69 billion dollars like that is incredible to say the least but it becomes an even more interesting conversation when you realize crash bandicoot is actually one of playstation's mascots spyro is as well two ips that are owned by activision and then you have call of duty which is locked into an exclusive contract with microsoft's direct competitor being sony call of duty is also a bit of an anomaly as it seems to be one of those titles that many of us grew up on yet over the yearly releases you could just feel activision slowly starting to give less and less fucks about the quality of the game and it was just hell-bent on making sure it nailed a yearly release with as much to monetize out of it as possible. And with Vanguard being the latest title considered to be the worst one yet, it still manages to generate over a billion dollars in revenue through the in-game store. Call of Duty apparently is just a title that no matter how much it seems to be universally despised on the surface, it's a major component of the gaming industry. And even Sony themselves have taken notice as to how much they really need it. In a recent interview, Sony has stated that Call of Duty is a quote-unquote essential game and can outsell more consoles for whoever controls it. They then go on to say, the importance of Call of Duty to entertainment in general is indescribable. The brand is the only video game IP to break into the top 10 of all entertainment brands among fans, joining powerhouses such as Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Lord of the Rings. Call of Duty is so popular that it influences users' choice of consoles, and its community of loyal users is entrenched enough that even if a competitor had the budget to develop a similar product, it won't be able to rival it. Not to mention, Call of Duty is regularly topping the best-selling charts and Sony made over $2 billion in microtransactions around holiday season of 2021, which, to bring you a little bit on the business side of things, that money essentially comes from things like GTA Online's Shark Cards, Fortnite skins, Apex Legends skins, and you guessed it, Call of Duty and Warzone. The last two ones pulled in a record $3 billion in 2020 alone. So it's kind of funny to think that here we are, with a game that seems to be universally hated in its worst year, yet can top best-selling charts and, and can break over a billion dollars in the in-game store. Store. According to Sony, can also influence the player's choice in platform or console that they choose to play on, and they'll be taking a little bit of that hit from, of course, that in-game store, that percentage that the platform owner takes off the top. Now you might be thinking, okay, cool, everybody's covering this. What the fuck is different? What's different here? What's different here is if you take a step back and you take a look at Sony's approach to everything, it seems like they're starting to really, I guess for lack of a better word, respect the competition and the changing gaming environment. Over the last couple of years, Sony's been very greedy in terms of sharing their IPs or even opening up their player base to crossplay. I remember back when Fortnite was becoming a huge thing, Epic Games allowed crossplay across all the platforms except for Sony because Sony felt like they needed a little extra kick back because PlayStation 4 was so much more successful than the Xbox One. Fast forward a couple years later, Borderlands 3, it's now available across all platforms, but initially when crossplay was released, you could play with everyone, but not anybody that was on PlayStation and PlayStation vice versa. You couldn't play with anyone that was on PC or Xbox as Sony felt like they needed a little extra cash to even consider allowing their player base to play with anybody else. And then they put up the front that that was because they couldn't protect their fan base, their players from anybody that was being toxic or screwing with them outside the PlayStation ecosystem. Obviously, that was bullshit, but the point here being, when it comes to their IPs, when it came to even opening up their servers and allowing their player race to play with anybody else, they weren't even entertaining the thought. And here we are, 2022. We have God of War now on PC. Spider-Man's about to release on PC in the next coming days. Last of Us Part 1, I mean, it's been well over a decade, but it's coming out on PC as well sometime soon. The Uncharted series, too. And then we have Sony publicly admitting that they, in fact, need Call of Duty on their platform. All things considered, it looks like the gaming climate is really changing. That Sony potentially, hopefully, is changing their mentality a little bit here. And they're starting to be much more open and even consumer friendly for those outside their platform. Which can then translate over into having PlayStation exclusives ported over to PC much sooner. Anything for them to continue to stay on top. At least that's what I was thinking. I could be entirely wrong, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Are you surprised to hear that Call of Duty is still this big of a powerhouse? That regardless of how big of a 
a budget any game really going forward has how much marketing how much support is behind that title call of duty's fan base is so entrenched and so loyal that according to sony it really doesn't matter they will never be able to rival the success of call of duty at least that is the mentality that they've come to accept do you agree with that do you think that is 100 percent true i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below but like always my name is cynic thank you guys so much for watching but until next time i will see y'all later